to my next video concerning the International Accounting Standards, Standard 16, Paragraph 39 and Paragraph 40. We're dealing with the revaluation model with a revaluation surplus. So look at this. A company, say Clark, purchased a machine for $8,000 at the beginning of the first fiscal year. At the end of the first fiscal year, its uh, fair value is going to be $10,000, where at the, at the end of the second year, it's supposed to be $7,000. So how should the company react in the first year, in the first fiscal year, and in the second fiscal year? And the International Accounting Standards, Standard 16, goes the following way. So take a look first, take a look now at paragraph 39, please. Because it says, if an asset's carrying amount is increased, is increased as a result of revaluation, the increase shall be recognized in other comprehensive income. There's two ways of reacting. First, you get the revaluation surplus. And then second, you get an effect in the income statement. And now it's this. As part of the balance sheet, you have the other, as part of the balance sheet, you have other comprehensive income, which doesn't affect profit or loss, and you have the income statement, which affects or which is which is made of profits and losses. So we have the following. First, acquisition costs equal eight thousand dollars, and now there is the revaluation surplus, the revaluation surplus of two thousand dollars because you have to you have to have a carrying amount of ten thousand dollars. So the revaluation surplus equals two thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars, which is reflected by Standard 16, paragraph 39, that there is, it shall be recognized, it shall be recognized in other comprehensive income. Now, that's the first year. So the first year results in an increase of revaluation surplus of $2,000 and in an increase of the carrying amount of the machine of $2,000 as well. That's the first year. The second year goes this way. You have to now, the fair value is supposed to be $7,000 only, which means strictly inferior to the, to the historical acquisition costs, meaning that first of all, first of all, you have to read paragraph 40, paragraph 40, and <clears throat> there is a decrease of first, the revaluation surplus, and second, second, there is a loss. There is a loss of a thousand dollars, right? Because paragraph forty goes this way: if an assets if an assets carrying amount is decreased is decreased as a result of a revaluation, which is true here, the decrease shall be recognized in profit or loss. Shall be recognized in profit or loss of a thousand dollars. That's the first clause. But the second goes this way. However, the decrease shall be recognized in other comprehensive income. To the extent of any credit balance existing in the revaluation surplus, so meaning this, if we had a revaluation surplus first, you have to turn down the revaluation surplus as a result resulting in other comprehensive income, and then only after this um, the income statement is affected, which means that the carrying amount at the end of the second year is $7,000 only. So it's very important to understand, I think, the content of Standard 16, paragraph 39 and paragraph 40, as we indicated here in this example, in this example one. So the answer, in the second period, the income statement, meaning only the income statement, profit or loss only, not the, the result in other comprehensive income. The income statement will show a loss of $1,000 or $3,000, and the answer is A. The answer is this, because first of all, revaluation surplus of $2,000 is decreased, and only after this we have to go down again, 
meaning a loss of a thousand dollars. So answer A was and is correct. If you like this video, check out our webinar for CFA Level 1 exam in November 2016. Thank you for watching.